neurological emergencies, right? In that we have mainly genetic urinary trauma. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Okay. So objectives of objective of this uh, topic is okay. Uh, the organs which are involved, okay, that is, the external genitalia, urethral injury, bladder injury, ureteral injury, and renal injury. See, uh, last three days back when I took class, that was uh, also a sort of emergency, right? Urological emergency in the sense, uh, the first one, ureteric polycanal. As such, the, we do not call, I mean, that those are not dye emergencies as uh, these topics, okay, which I'm Okay, very rarely it is life threatening. The GU trauma is uh, very less likely to take someone's life. So always take a step back and move through your systems automatically and systematically. Whenever a patient with any trauma comes, okay, please take history and examine the patient properly. Okay, because like I told you, any injury, any renal injury will less likely take the patient's life okay we might miss more grievous injuries like uh, bowel injuries or liver injuries or splenic injuries whereas kidney injuries is less likely to take a patient's life so whenever a patient with trauma comes to the er always take history and examine properly okay? assessing for concomitant pelvic fracture is one of the most important points when a patient with gu trauma that is a uh, genital unit trauma presents to the uh, yeah. Anything can happen. You might laugh, laugh at this, but a human bite to the scrotum. Okay, Th there is a case reported in the literature. The human bite to the scrotum may be because of a husband a fight between a tussle between a husband and wife. Okay, in anger, the wife might uh, just bite the husband's scrotum. We have seen cases. At least one case I have seen in my life. Okay. So human bites to the scrotum are rare and can be associated with high morbidity rate if poorly managed. Okay, so there was a report, uh, a case report in the literature of a human bite to the scrotum that was successfully treated with a five-day course of antibiotics, surgical debridement, and healing by secondary intention. So coming to the first uh, injury, external genitalia, trauma. Yeah. To the female genitalia, external genitalia is very rare. Okay, in males, the injury is very obvious. Hmm? Look for swelling, ecchymosis, and deformity. Testis testicular torsion can also occur with trauma. Testicular rupture occurs in 50% of patients with a direct blow to a testicle and have a very low threshold to ultrasound. So, testicular rupture is usually not picked up by ultrasound. Mind, mind that. The male external genitalia okay so when you come in the, like i told you in uh, the female external genitalia the trauma is very rare okay uh the female external genitalia contents consists of what the mons pubis right the vagina and all uh, it's very rare the direct trauma to the uh male uh, sorry female genitalia whereas in males it is obvious okay uh, the more uh, the first one being penile fracture okay so when when you think of fracture, okay, there, it's not always a fracture of a bony segment. It can be okay of a penile fracture also. Usually this is a sexual accident, as in uh, when somebody bends a uh, erect penis. Okay, you can have fracture fracture. I'll tell you what uh, exactly a penile fracture is, and there's an immediate pain. Okay, often followed by a popping sound and there is early swelling okay so the most important key point in the penile fracture is it is a rupture or it is a tear in the tunica albuginea surrounding the corpora cavernosa please remember it is a tear or rupture of the tunica albuginea surrounding the corpora cavernosa and it is not a real fracture okay so 20% of the penile fractures are associated with urethral injury and it always requires an operative repair right 
you will see cases previously okay in the olden days people maybe because of uh, the shy behavior or because see penile fracture is always because of a sexual accident see i told you uh, bending a uh, bend uh, erect penis okay or abnormal sexual position so they uh, they were shy to tell that to the doctor so they used to hit their uh, even if they had a fracture they used to hit it okay but now i mean now people are becoming more open so we see a lot of cases in the opd or in the er so a penile fracture is classically described using what vegetable okay i don't think you all will eat this vegetable after you see this picture okay so it looks like this okay eggplant deformity what is eggplant it's a one tap one tap one it so it is uh, the deformity looks like this why because there is early swelling there is rupture or tear in the tunica albuginea as a result there is bleeding early bleeding and leads to swelling as seen in this picture coming to urethral injury so that was uh, injury to the external genitalia okay now coming to the urethral injuries again like i told you rare in females because the uh, female urethra is short only 4 cm and it is well within the body right it is inside the body so urethral injuries are usually rare in female but it, in males okay most of the urethra is outside as in the penis penile part right so the in uh, <coughs> the male urethral injuries are divided into anterior injuries and posterior urethral injuries which is divided by the urogenital diaphragm in males 25% of all the pelvic fractures have urethral injuries mind you 25% of all pelvic fractures have urethral injuries versus only 5% in females more commonly the posterior division so like i told you in females those 5% which are associated with fractures usually if there are no fractures there is no uh, urethral injury okay so gross hematuria and pelvic fracture okay prompts you for uh, for a diagnosis of posterior urethral injury until proven otherwise Mind you, gross hematuria and pelvic fracture so whenever there is pelvic fracture you should not take it lightly okay look for telltale signs of uh, urethral injury the big four clues to urethral injury are blood at the meatus gross hematuria inability to void and ecchymosis or swelling of the penis so these are the telltale signs of urethral injury blood at the meatus ecchymosis inability to void and gross hematuria so what four things are necessary before you can attempt to pass a foley scatheter many a times the urethral injury patient will come to you in the er so in a patient with urethral injury will you go and straight away put the catheter foley scatheter okay so what are the signs you have to see textbook see the textbook uh, say four things along uh, which allow you to pass a foley safely in case of urethral injury if once you have ruled out there is no pelvic or suprapubic tenderness okay or fracture then you can safely put in a foley okay if there is no penile scrotal or perineal hematoma no blood at the urethral meatus no abnormal findings on dre so when there are these findings which you have ruled out okay as soon as the patient comes to the er no um, <coughs> signs of uh, suprapubic tenderness or fracture no penile or scrotal hematoma no blood at the urethral meatus then you can put in a foley safely but okay high riding prostate or boggy prostate is concerning for a posterior urethral injury okay blood causes the posterior what happens when there is a urethral injury there is a bleeding and the blood uh, the collected blood pushes the prostate up that is known as high riding prostate or a boggy prostate when you do a dre distal rectal examination you will not be able to feel the prostate because of the, the hematoma or the collection pushing the prostate upwards so the great foley's debate okay whenever you are i mean uh, whenever you see those signs whenever you have ruled out those signs you can put in a foley safely okay <coughs> imaging okay what are the imaging you uh, you will perform for a urethral injury if any concern for a urethral injury do a retrograde urethrogram what do you mean by retrograde urethrogram okay so you put in a small uh, say a suction tube okay at the tip of the urethra 
you go through meatus and push in a die okay that is known as retrograde you are going backwards that that's why it's known as retrograde okay so whenever you do a system retrograde urethrogram either it, the interpretations can be either normal okay so the die you will see along the whole, whole length of the urethra normal partial urethral injury that is some die in the bladder and some extravasation and a complete urethral injury you will not see any die in the bladder when there is complete urethral uh, <coughs> rupture so this is a uh, an example of normal okay the normal thing because the bladder is nicely getting filled with the dye urethral injury if no concerns for injury so once you have done a retrograde urethrogram if it is possible so mind you again a patient with urethral injury comes to you in the er you may not or you did not do a retrograde urethrogram immediately okay so only if those patients who have already come with a retrograde urethrogram to you sometimes patient do come with a retrograde retrograde urethrogram so if no concerns for injury on retrograde urethrogram then you can put in a folies okay if a partial urethral tear okay is seen on retrograde urethrogram that is rgu textbooks say one careful attempt to pass a 12 or 14 french folly that means a small folly okay small size folly can be undertaken but most urologists disagree with this okay if there is a complete tear you should not even attempt with the smallest folies okay possible so if there is a complete tear of the urethra if that is shown by a retrograde urethrogram then go for a suprapubic catheterization a urological consultation for operative repair to a higher center so that was urethral injury so you know how to manage a urethral injury right uh, whenever patients with urethral injury come to the er you do not have a rgu fine okay so gentle and then you have all the telltale signs of um, urethral injury blood at the meatus swelling inability to void and all that so at least you can try once okay gentle attempt with a 12 or a 14 french folies okay using a lot of gelic and jelly if the folies goes in and then urine is seen in the <coughs> thing at the end of the folies then you are safe fine but once you feel there is a uh, restriction okay or there is resistance then don't attempt again and again okay you will be injuring the urethra more so in those cases you put in a suprapubic send the patient home or admit or for, uh, <coughs> if you have to admit for other reasons then do a retrograde urethrogram after 6 weeks or 3 months whatever okay protocol so that is uh, urethral injury now coming to bladder injury okay one mcq question which part of the bladder is the weakest and most likely to rupture any idea anyone which part of the bladder is the weakest and most likely to rupture the trigon the lateral walls the dome or the superior wall and the posterior wall answer is the dome okay this is the weakest point of the bladder through which perforation or rupture can occur so this is an example of bladder injury the arrow marks should show extravasation of dye into the peritoneal cavity okay whereas you can see dye in the bladder the other uh, <coughs> area shown by the arrows represented represent Uh, extravasation of the dye so 80% of the bladder injuries are associated with pelvic fracture so 80% whenever there is a pelvic fracture uh, say uh, bladder injury is inevitable in around 80% so injuries can be classified as contusions intraperitoneal ruptures that is through the dome most commonly or extraperitoneal ruptures so again whenever a um, bladder injury patient comes you have to rule out whether it is an extraperitoneal rupture or an intraperitoneal rupture you know the peritoneal deflection right from where it goes up into the bladder so intraperitoneal it is through the dome and extraperitoneal seen exclusively with pelvic fractures signs gross hematuria in 95% of the cases patients present with gross hematuria 
microscopic hematuria with the pelvic fracture okay so if there is no pelvic fracture and no gross hematuria it excludes an injury to the bladder okay what about pelvic fracture and microscopic hematuria then do a retrograde ct cystography okay in such cases so no pelvic fracture no gross hematuria you don't have any of these so uh, injury to the urinary bladder is unlikely okay but you have a pelvic fracture and a microscopic hematuria see you have to raise a high suspicion of bladder injury like i told you before 80 percent of patients with pelvic fracture present with uh, bladder injury so you have a microscopic hematuria with a pelvic fracture at least go for a ct cystography okay so retrograde cystography that is either uh, uh, ct okay is imaging modality of choice it is very sensitive the retrograde cystography is very sensitive imaging technique okay bladder injury as you can see here the black uh, thing in the bladder okay that is the dome of the bladder where the injury has taken place management contusions can be managed conservatively okay intraperitoneal rupture re always requires an operative repair okay intraperitoneal that means to say you there's a rupture or breach in the peritoneum okay and there's extra recession of urine in the peritoneal cavity whereas extra peritoneal rupture the even if there is an uh, urine extra recession it is contained in the pelvic cavity in cases of extra peritoneal rupture okay so this may be managed non operatively with an indwelling police catheter which usually heals spontaneously okay so you will keep in the police for at least around two weeks some say 10 weeks 10 days some say two weeks okay so if there's a small uh, defect extra peritoneal rupture that uh, <coughs> police uh, catheterization itself is the treatment okay so ureteral injury now so that was a bladder injury now coming to the ureteral injury these are extremely rare Okay, gun, gunshot wound is the most common okay, mod modality for ureteral injury. No reliable physical findings. When you see a patient with ureteric injury, you will not have any physical findings. It is usually a retrograde diagnosis. So in this, in such cases, history is very important. Okay. Urine analysis is normal in around 25% of the time. Do not rely on the urine uh, analysis report. Being suspicious for it is the only way you will catch it. So, like I said, gunshot injury is one of the most common injury. Okay, for you, I mean, most common cause for uretic injury. So, take careful history and proper examination. Imaging, okay, delayed CT with IV contrast. Management requires an operative setup. So, surgery is the treatment, always <coughs> the treatment for uretic injuries. Okay, what type of surgery is? I don't think it is necessary in your at your level. So coming to renal injury, this is the most important. Out of all these injuries which we have dealt with, I think renal injury is most important for you. Okay, as as in it can be asked in the exams also. Okay, ninety percent of the renal injuries are blunt trauma to the abdomen. Only ten percent are penetrating injuries. Again, relax. Like I told you something else will kill the patient before the renal injury does okay so less than one point sorry 0.1 percent of the trauma deaths are because of renal injuries got it so 90 percent of blunt trauma 10 percent are penetrating but okay the renal injury patients only isolated renal injury patients usually do not die because of the injury per se okay they will always al almost always have a uh, concomitant other injuries like the, like bowel injuries or liver injuries or splenic injuries the classification of renal injuries this is CT classification grade 1 grade 2 grade 3 grade 4 grade 5 grade 1 is only a subcapsular hematoma okay whereas grade 5 is completely shattered kidney see the picture okay itself will understand grade 1 is just sub uh, capsular hematoma whereas grade 5 is 
shattered kidneys. This is the CT classification. So hematuria and renal injury. Now, what is the correlation between hematuria and uh, renal injury? There is poor correlation with the degree of injury. Okay, hematuria does not always correlate with renal injury. In a patient with renal injury, the patient may not have hematuria at all. Okay, microscopic hematuria on its own is not a concern. Okay, so you may repeat urine analysis in three weeks. Okay, you should image if the following. Micros microscopic hematuria with shock. Okay, gross hematuria, yes, you have to do something. Rapid deceleration without hematuria or shock, rare but important. Okay, penetrating trauma in the region, yes, you have to image the patient. So, what is the imaging done? CT with IV contrast is 90 to 100 percent sensitive in case of renal injury. Remember, focused abdominal sonography in trauma. Fast means focused abdominal sonography in trauma is not good for solid organ injury. So do not use it in this setting. Okay. So when a patient, uh, patient with suspected uh, uh, abdomen tra abdominal trauma, okay, blunt abdominal trauma comes to you, okay. So fast may be done to do a collection and all, but in case of renal injury, fast is not important. Formal ultrasound not as sensitive as CT. Management okay of renal injury. So if no rapid deceleration mechanism, how rapid? Okay. So rapid, you have to define rapid. How rapid? How when will you call rapid as rapid? Okay. So and no gross hematuria, then you can discharge the patient with follow-up scan and urine analysis. Okay. The grade one and two injuries can be managed non-operatively. Bed rest until gross hematuria clears. So, see, this is grade one to five. I didn't tell you about the two, three, four, and five. Okay. So one is just a uh, subcapsular. Two is expanding subcapsular with tear in the cortex. Okay, cortical also. Three is more. Uh, see, one of the poles with expanding hematoma. Four is vessel plus completely shattered uh, one either pole right and then five is shattered kidney with the vascular avulsion so grade one and two injuries are usually non-operative the main treatment is bed rest until gross hematuria clears grade three and up a uh, decision completely lies in the uh, with the urologist okay Three and above. I have seen cases where even grade five injuries have been managed conservatively. Okay, and patient has been all right. Okay, so see, this kidney is a retroperitoneal organ. Okay, uh, and usually when a patient presents kidney injuries, even if they have hematoma, it does not expand much because the retroperitoneum is a contained uh, space which can contain the hematoma. Okay, I think so. That was it. If you have any questions, please let me know. So out of all this, what we did, okay, uh, external genitalia, uh, ureter ureteral injury, ureteral bladder, and renal injury. I think renal injury is most important as in theory point of view. Okay, but it's good to know. See, in clinics, you will see a lot of ureteral injuries and uh, uh, penal injuries. Okay, but renal injuries as in theory point of view it is important for you fine is there any question no so i think i'll stop then fine